All right, so uh, two days ago, I made a video on the least hype festivals in Grand Cross. And I actually thought maybe I should rank them from worst to best because I really feel like upsetting some people because they're going to be very, very, very sad. I'm going to put their favorite festival lower than my favorite festival. But this will be an objective ranking from first to last of the best to worst festival in the game. And honestly, I thought there were more festivals for every reason. There are only 14 festivals, which, you know, thinking that they, they started coming out over two years ago, that's actually not bad. I mean, for Globo, it's less than two years, but for JP, it's like more than two years ago when Lost Vein first came out. So um, it's actually not that much, but yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I don't know. I, I haven't actually tried ranking them yet because I wanted to see what I'd come up with in like the spot. And this will be hard because festivals in general are just very good. Like all these characters are good. <laughs> Like the, especially, I mean, the only character I would have said that is like genuinely bad was King, but after the Relic is actually pretty good. So, and I'm counting Relics, obviously, because or else it would be like too nitpicky. Like, yeah, I'm not counting King's Relic, but I'm counting Bonds. Like, yeah, that's 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 not fair, right? So, uh, easiest to rank ever is Trader Meliodas is number one. Number one, best festival in the game overall. He is a god in everything, essentially. Like, he's a god for... PvP, he's a god for PvE, he's a god for uh, anything, he's a god for, if you put him on another game, he's still gonna be a god, it's just, it's just how it is, Trader Mel is a god, so. Um, number two, though, is a very hard <laughs> ranking, I don't know, um, I'm gonna be putting characters, I'm gonna move them around as I go, because again, I have not ranked these yet, because I actually wanted to do these, um, on camera for the first time to see what I'll come up with, but I think for now I'm gonna put second place as King because King is just fantastic as well for everything. He's just slightly worse than Meliodas, like some PV harder PV activities, like you know, the bird and um and deer, but like in terms of like farming and like uh, generally like other PV stages, King can actually be much better than Meliodas. So and PvP, they're like basically just as good if not trading well he's a little bit better but yeah so number two i'm putting king number three oh man <laughs> um overall right let's let's think objective overall in the game i think number three genuinely is the one Ascanor. only because he is an absolute beast for demonic beast battle but I, again the, the, i could change these on the spot if i if i see fitting I'm, I'm gonna be moving them around um should i go at the bottom here i think as it as it is already i'm gonna i'm gonna put him at the bottom like this king even with relic i still think he might still be the worst festival if not kusak i'm gonna put both of them here at the bottom like kusak is actually like again these characters are all good maybe like, these three are the contenders for, like, the bottom three, I think. And, like, Lost Vein. I think the bottom four are these characters, right? And then all these characters end up being, like, very good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these, and I'll, I'll order them in a second. And then Galfer is probably, like, here. Because I think Galfer is worse than all of these, for sure. It's just that, you know, it's hard to rank Zaldris because he's only good for PvP. And he's only good a, as a fourth slot, but it would be disingenuous if I ranked him below like Assault Meliodas because I use Zeldris way more than I would use Assault Meliodas, and he's so much better addition to any team than Assault Meliodas could ever be, right? As is, you know, in general speaking. Um, I think I'm gonna put Assault Meli here only because he still can be good for specific PV activities. But so can Red Lost Vein. And so can Kusak. Uh, nah, I think Assault, man, Assault Mali is just so shafted. His necessity for having a full, like, demon team is just really shit, right? Like, his, his absolute necessity for every single friend around him to be the same race is kind of weird as well, right? But, like, I, I don't know, man. I, I, I... He's just been shafted by the game. Uh, I'm actually even tempted to put him at the bottom and put King here. I guess Ultimate Old Melly, like, I love him. He's, like, the most hype festival Trevor released, but he's the most shafted as well, right? 
I think I kind of want to do this. And like Lost Vein makes sense to be here because he is the oldest festival. Um, and, you know, he, he, he has some design choices where at the time, like his ability to basically be crit every hit made sense at the time, but obviously with time, with more and more characters being crit-based, it became worse, right? Um, for now, I'm gonna leave it as this, and then we can... Let's go back up here. Um, do I wanna put a bond here? I think I do. I think I do wanna put a bond there. The only issue is that what do I value more, PvP or PvE? I think I value PvP a little bit more than general PvE activities, but I value Demonic Beast Battle more than anything else, because Demonic Beast Battle is genuinely difficult. Like, PvP, there are so many, like, possibilities for things you can use. You don't have to use Bond, but for Demonic Beast Battle, I feel like you have to use Trader Melee to, like, actually be... Chilling while completing the demonic beast battles, right? Both of them. So it's like I feel like I I value demonic beast battle in terms of ranking more. With that being said, I think I should put go for below Kusak as well then, because Kusak is actually good for demonic beast battle. Hmm. Okay, I think should be like fair, right? I want to put number five is Margaret. Um. Margaret is just tremendous, and she, like I said, she is really good for Demonic Beast, but she's not as good as the one, in terms of, like, a, a blue DPS, but she's also really good support for Bird. She's not, like, on the main team, right, but she's really good for general PV activities, and she's still pretty good for PvP, right? Um, so I can't really knock on her for that, she's still really good for PvP. These four, though, they're, like, middle of the road, I think... Goddess Liz is starting to show her age because her defenses are not the best and she got a very bad holy relic, like a very bad holy relic. Like these three characters, right? Merlin got a phenomenal holy relic. These two characters, um, they can still get really good holy relics in the future, especially Dn. I think Dn, there's like a really good chance Dn gets like a holy relic that makes like the best unit in the game or something. Like if, if they give her a holy relic, then she, I don't know reduces damage taken by 50% when putting up a stance, but uh, she, she would take the regular damage and still count for her passive, I don't know, something crazy like that, she could, like, be stupid, right? Um, I think Goddess Liz should go here. Again, she's starting to show her age, um, but she's still, I don't know, she's still decent for her specific PV activities. So I don't want to rank her above uh, any of these three characters, really. But I still kind of want to rank her above Kusak and Galfer. Galfer is a weird one, because I feel like Galfer, his unknown team is very good. But that's all he has to show, right? Is his unknown team? Is his unknown team is very good. But at the same time, I always feel like he is the worst part of the team, if that makes any sense. But at the same, I mean, he, he, can, he, you know, seals Margaret from cleansing, but Margaret's not even that prevalent anymore. I don't know. Um... I think the end might actually go here. I my 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 senses are telling me to do this. Only because Zaldris is a character I use way more. And I feel like he has way more usability. But Merlin actually is a front character, right? Just the end, she has so many flaws. So many flaws. Kind of want to put her below Goddess Liz, but I don't think I will. She just has so many flaws that makes me, like, not want to use her. When, I, <laughs> when I'm when i picking a team, I just don't want to use her. Like, the only thing she brings to the table is having a, a stance. To me, it is. To having a, a, a taunt that lasts two turns on level one. That's like, that's like her, ba her best asset. Because, um, I don't know, if our first taunt lasted for two turns, he would be the best taunt character in the game. Um... Because, you know, you attack him, you, you lose ultimate gauge, stuff like that. He actually has damage reduction on taunt. 
I think Assault Melee fits here. Like, King, the thing is that people are going to be like, why is King above Assault Melee? But, like, King, if you see any of the, the videos on King's Holy Relic, he is actually very good. It actually makes me want to put him above Lost Vein. Because Lost Vein is, like, a really good PvE character to this day. It's like, this is difficult because Assault Melee blows King out of the water in, like, basically any PvE activity. Like, this is a PvP-only character. Uh, and you're gonna need, like, a lane and stuff to actually make him work. And even with a lane, it's like, the team is not even that good. It's like, it's really good. It's definitely better than using Assault Melee, probably. Um... Ah, uh, it's hard. I think- I think this is fair. I think this is fair. Only because... King's Holy Relic- like, when Lost Vein gets a Holy Relic, man, that's- Oh, man. He could be so good. Mmm... Now, here is where... See, the one- <laughs> uh, The one is so funny because, um... You know, he was starting to really show his age until like Trader Melee came out and it really allowed him to be like a very good unit for having two single targets, right? Because then when Trader Melee came out, it was like, oh, I need single targets on my team. That one was like, oh, whoop, I have two single targets. <laughs> oh, and I hit hard. And that, that really brought him up. Um, I, it's just, I just value Demonic Beast Battles so much more than PvP. Only, again, only because PvP has so many options, but Bond is objectively better at PvP, obviously. Objectively better, it's not even, like... Bond's team is better than anything the one could ever use, for sure. Not even a question. I kinda wanna keep it like this. I kinda wanna keep it like this. I'm a little uncertain on these bottom characters. I think Assault Melee is the worst fast way in the game. He's the most shafted fast way in the game. I, I don't think anyone could ever argue that. He is the, the absolute most shafted character in the game. Uh, it's him. And then number two was Ludosiel, but Ludosiel got his relic that actually made him, like, good again. So it's like... Or made him usable again. So it's like... Assault Melee is undisputed the most shafted character in the game. He, did, he doesn't have a fifth weapon. He has four weapons. It's been over a year since he came out. He still has four weapons. He barely gets buffs for his team. The best demons in the game are Meliodas. It's like... Uh, yeah, I think Assault Melee is the most shadow character in the game. I think... It, it's a toss-up between these two. Like, I would put King here if not for his Relic, right? But obviously, after his Relic, the things have changed. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know what you would change about the list. But I'm 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 somewhat confident on this. I think I'm somewhat confident on this. Maybe you can change around like I don't know if you like DN more than Merlin. The DN has so many flaws. So many flaws. But she's probably better than Goddess Liz, I think. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Actually, mm. <laughs> no way. DN is actually pretty decent for Demonic Beast battle, right? I'm not really thinking of that because I don't use DN. Because I, I think Matrona is way better at Demonic Beast battle than DN is. Way better. As being a red tank, she's way better. I think that the capabilities of Demonic Beast battle should actually put her above. It's just that I think of PvP and Demonic Beast Battle, like, separately, right? And I think Demonic Beast Battle... Like, she has nothing on Demonic Beast Battle. At least DN has a chance. Again, I think DN is completely overthrown by Matrona. Matrona is just an objectively much better tank. And she heals the team. Hmm. It could, it could be either or. It's just PvP, I think Merlin's way better. But DN has the, the demonic beast battle capabilities. Anyways, I think I think I think now I can end it.